The Kansas City Chiefs are ready to launch the second half of the 2022 season with a 10-game run. We're going to run it down, see where they are in the division, and wait on a little bit of news today on Locked On Chiefs. From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked On Chiefs podcast. Welcome back, everybody. It's about to start, and we're going to get into it today. Everything we need to know about where this team is going. We're brought to you by Prize Picks today, the easiest way to play daily fantasy sports. Go check them out. Use our code Locked On, and you get a hundred percent bonus deposit. Always good for you. In there at Prize Picks now. What we have to do is take a look at the future. Uh, on the bye week coming off of it, getting ready to get back into the groove, there is a lot of turmoil for the Kansas City Chiefs. We're going to go through it all. I'm Ryan Tracy, the founder of Rogue Analytics and Performance Consulting, RGR Football, and NFL33.com, where we run down the entire league. And I'm Chris Clark. Thank you for listening. We are <laughs> – yeah, it is one of those days. My bad. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun because we get to talk about the division and we're going to talk about the – upcoming schedule for these chiefs yeah a, a lot going on folks uh thanks for making this your first listen check out another show on the locked on network for your second listen today there are a lot of great shows uh if you're a newbie like me check out the fantasy hockey show as well um i'm gonna have to talk to those guys because i need a little bit of help uh, a lot going on here so as we take stock now as we get ready to record this the chiefs are clearly in control of the division but it's not it's not Grossly so. It's not you know th- a three-game lead or anything like that. I think at the end of the day, what we've seen, even though the, the Denver Broncos got off the, the bottom a little bit over in London, this is still division that the Chiefs own. They should be able to maneuver. We'll talk about the coming matchups, divisional and otherwise, here in a couple of minutes. But just at this point, I don't see another team in this division that has significant momentum enough to make me nervous at all. You? No, not not really. Not right now. I think the Chargers are the front runners outside the Chiefs, obviously. Um, and I don't feel that they're in a great position. They have a lot of injuries they're dealing with. And a lot of question marks still around that roster, which is kind of funny considering everybody picked them to do so well this year. Oh, wait, that's kind that's of every part for the course. <laughs> I mean, that, that's that's what it comes down to. So that said... We have to look at pitfalls. The Chiefs are five and two, which is exactly where uh, I had them at this point in my preseason prediction. I think you were right on the same page, right? Yeah, I don't know that I had them losing to the Colts. Right, neither did I. Uh, but, but you know what? It is what it is. So, ten thousand foot picture, they're on track. They're where we thought they would be overall, and certainly within striking distance of a thirteen win season. I think that's still on the table as we run through this, folks. We'd like to know your opinions. So if you're not subbed already, make sure you hit the like and the sub button on YouTube and get subbed on the audio platforms because we want feedback from this. This is this is a predictive show. We don't do these a lot. So want to get you guys involved. Leave your comments on the YouTube page or in the reviews on Spotify and iTunes. Uh, you can even hit us at Locked on Chiefs on Twitter. So they start off on a Sunday night coming back against the Titans. Titans that didn't have Ryan Tannehill for their weekend matchup. I'm not, I'm just not scared. I'm sorry. There's just not enough with the departure, honestly, uh, of AJ Brown. These Titans don't bother me. Uh, I just don't see a way, even if the chiefs were to bring, you know, their, their B plus or their B game, I still feel there's going to be a lot of high impact plays on the chief side. I'm not sure we can see any of that from the Titans side. Yeah. And the, there's a lot of questions that you have with the Titans, and it's going to be a large question mark. Who's going to start? You would think that it's going to be Tannehill against the Chiefs. Even if he comes back, you're right. Their team is not what it was last year with A.J. Brown, that they are definitely going to be rebuilding probably this season and, and maybe into next year. We'll have to see how that turns out. But, you know, even with King Henry running the ball, I mean, he's doing okay, but he's not going to have the same effectiveness if they can't throw the ball and threaten you downfield. Well, and here's the thing. Uh, they're they're leading their division. That, that's fine. They're great. But uh, until this weekend, they had allowed more points than they had scored, despite having their, their four and two when this weekend started. So it, it's kind of a weird conundrum in that particular division. The AFC South is a mess top to bottom. I think we saw that in multiple ways. So I just don't think that the firepower is there. At the end of the day, 
I, I think the Chiefs get out of there. You get a chance to see what you have in Tony. I think that gives you a small opportunity. I don't think he gets a ton of touches or anything like that. At this point, we can't really even project that he's going to be on the field in the offense or at all. We won't know here until tomorrow, folks, when they get on the field and we have a little bit more feedback. But right now, I think it's a good way uh, Sunday night under the lights to get a new guy on the field in just a small volume of touches that might give you an inkling of what can come. Yeah. This is just such an interesting scenario as to where it could go and, and what they're going, what we're going to be, be seeing after the bye. The other thing, and we haven't really talked about this, and I think we need to discuss it really quick. I will admit from the top right now, I missed on the whole Russell Wilson to in Denver thing. I just, that has been brutal to watch. And I, you know, I don't like, don't get me wrong. I have no love loss of the Broncos, but watching them struggle as much as they have with Russell at the helm, just, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. I mean, it's tough and we'll get to them in the, in the next segment when we talk about the, the Broncos games, because there are bigger ramifications than that, than just that. But the Titans look like it's a win. They come back with the Jaguars the next week. Um, that is a nice early game, like a normal schedule. Always nice to have one of those every now and then. Now, the emergence of Etienne for them has been nice. Uh, Lawrence, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I thought Doug was going to have him a lot farther advanced here. And obviously, folks, it's Tuesday. There is a trade possibility that we have not heard of as of this recording with the Jaguars and Doug Peterson's team. If something happens, we will definitely jump on and let you know immediately. But at this moment, nothing's gone on. This is a team in Jacksonville, though, that I thought was going to be better on the offensive side, particularly a quarterback, and had I, I thought made the investments on the defense to to help that come around. It clearly hasn't happened, and I don't think they're going to be able to touch the Chiefs in any way, shape, or form. I would agree with you. I don't think that they will. I think that it's the the one thing that scares me about the Jacksonville team is that. Kansas City has a tendency lately to take their foot off the gas at times. Yeah. And to me, this is a perfect game where they could do where they could do that. They shouldn't, but they could. They certainly could. Nothing is out of the realm of possibility. But it sometimes you have to you have to take some chances in those kind of games when you don't know what's out there. And one way to do that is prize picks. If you want to get into daily fantasy sports, this is the way to do it. It's a simple concept. They set a line. Monday night's game was, I think, uh, 217 for Jacoby Brissett. You just had to pick whether he'd go more or less on that line. That's really important. It makes things simple. You pick two to five of those players. You roll up whether they're going to go more or less, above or below, that kind of thing. You can earn up to 10 times your money on every single entry, and that's all there is. There's no competing against other people. There's no changing lineups. It's boom, boom, get on the road, and you can do it for any major sport that you want, and even some minor sports that I still don't understand. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's fast, it's easy, it's safe, and it's everywhere. 30 states plus Canada, it can be found. It's real simple, too. All you got to do is go to prizepicks.com, or you can get the Prize Picks app on any app store. Get signed up, and you can use our code Locked On for an instant deposit bonus of 100%. So if you put $100 in, they give you an extra 100 to play with. It's a lot, and it's a great deal at Prize Picks when you use our code Locked On. So check them out for daily fantasy sports. So, I see both those games as two wins, as we talked about in the last segment. And then that kind of gets to the interesting part, because then you get division again. You get the second chance at the Chargers. It will be in Los Angeles. Keaton Allen's made a, an, a, an appearance. Uh, I don't know if he's a ghost <laughs> of himself or what you would call it, but there's been an appearance. Um, I just We're back to the same thing where, yes, it's a matchup problem because it's a divisional foe and they always play each other tough. I, I, they just don't have any teeth. I just don't see it. Eckler's been, I think, having a, a slightly underwhelming season in terms of national media, but I think he's playing pretty well. Does Do they give you anything to worry about right now? So here's the problem. Uh, Mike Williams, it sounds like, will be out in that game. Hmm. Obviously, well, I would think so. Obviously, that th there's a possibility that changes, but the original timeline of his injury was four weeks. So mm -hmm. if he misses, he's not going to be in that game. And I would imagine that with such a huge divisional game, and obviously it depends on what the Chargers do between now and that game, 
how quickly they try to rush him back. But I, I wonder if he's not available in that game. If he's not, good luck. I, I feel a lot better about Keenan Allen against the Chiefs DBs than I do about Mike Williams against the Chiefs DBs. Yeah, I, I have to agree. And he's just got a knack. I wouldn't be surprised if he pushes himself back before then just because he knows he's got a knack against the, the Chiefs defense. And that's troublesome. But at the end of the day, I see that as a W. Then they get the Los Angeles Rams. Um, again, it's it's home game, so the Rams are coming there. It's not like they're spending the week in L.A. or anything. The Rams have been all over the place. There's moments when I think that they're they're going to actually turn it around and then something else goes wrong. For me, it's about making sure that you're up for that game, that you're on fire. Uh, you're firing on all cylinders, that is, like coordination, everybody on the same page. They do that, and I don't see that being a problem either, despite Ramsey or – you know, whoever might be catching passes from Stafford's flailing arm, I'm not sure. Yeah, there's a lot of questions about the Rams this year after what they did last year, and I think that you got to feel good about this game. I think it should be a win, but here's the problem that I see with it specifically. You saw how much of an emotional game that was against the Chargers the first time around, yep. and I also think that led into the letdown against the Colts. So in that scenario... This is a game where again you got to be a little careful about a, a letdown from week to week. That's that's fair. Uh, and it, sorry, just last last point. And the problem is who they play the next week. Yeah, I, it is back to back, and that's like we've seen earlier in this season. We've seen in past seasons. Sometimes they look a little too far ahead. They do do planning each week, two weeks out. So they are starting to look at that next game, which is the Bengals. And that, I think, is what's shaping back. Joe Burrow started really slow, but he has been coming around, and I think they're getting back on track. They're not running the ball as much as they did last year, so I don't think the balance is there. And now uh, Chase has been out. That's a significant issue. Without him, I, I do like their other pass catchers, but it just doesn't feel like if they have to miss people, unlike when the Chiefs were missing people, I don't think they can recover as well, even though I think Burrow's been playing out of his mind for the last two weeks. Yeah, and the question that is going to go into that game is I think Chase will be back for that game. They didn't put him on IR, so in essence, I believe he's going to be back for that game. And then they're going to be playing against a, a, a Bengals team that, you know, obviously we don't know about in, how injuries are going to work between now and when they play, but you mm -hmm. would imagine that we're playing against a pretty much a full a bevy of, of offensive players for the Bengals, and I think that's a problem for Kansas City. Do I think that Kansas City can win? Yes. But it's at Cincinnati that's going to help them. And you know that Kansas City is going to be very, very interested in winning this game based on what happened in the AFC Championship game. But the other question that you get into is, this is the part of the schedule where you have to start wondering, what is a, the new guy in Kadarius Tony doing on this roster? How has he changed what the offense is doing? How has he brought in and done different things? And is he returning punts like we think he will and i bring that up because this is the game that i really see that that really mattering for kansas city i don't think that they're looking at a game against the chargers like what they have a couple weeks prior and expecting him to be ready that quickly to have a bigger role but i do think that by the Bengals game that is something that is going to be uh quite possible i i agree i think this is this is a tough one this is a matchup that if they are going to stumble, and I, I, I don't think they run the table. I think that's very hard to keep a team with this many rookies playing uh, up week yep. to week to week. So running the table, I think, is probably a, a very long shot. It's a possibility, but it's definitely a long shot. I think if there's a game that they drop in this second half, it is this Bengals game because I think just in terms of, of talent and possibilities, they're probably about as evenly matched as anybody left on the schedule. Um, in fact, I'll just go ahead. I, I'll call it an, an L on my book just to, to give something there. Yeah, and I will give it an L as well. If well, okay, with the caveat, assuming Chase is back, if his injury lingers, that completely changes this game. Okay, fair enough. Fair uh, enough. Because he is just a, such a dynamic playmaker, and Kansas City has had trouble in the past. Although I'm curious to see what they would do with this year's CBs compared to what they've had in the past. The big thing for me, though, is this is the last place where Kansas City should be losing a game. They shouldn't lose any of the rest of them. Right. Uh, that's my thought as well. Folks, 
in just a second, we're going to get into two teams that made a major trade in the offseason and how have they benefited from it. They're both on Chiefs' schedule here as we wrap up. But check out Locked On Sports today. It's a new feed from us that gets all the big stories from all the sports in one. You can check it out on Odyssey or anywhere you get your applications for these podcast-type things. BetOnline.net is your number one source for football and the start of new, the new basketball season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis in every game. And as always, BetOnline remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including MMA, MLB, boxing, and golf, head to this website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Now we get into the meat of it, and they play what is it? Five ball games in 28 days, something like that. Starting on December 12th, I'm um, sorry, December 11th, they get Broncos, Texans, Seahawks, Broncos, Raiders. Raiders culminating in uh, the 8th of January. That's going to be really interesting, and uh, it's at the Raiders. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Uh, they are playing New Year's Day against the Denver Broncos, as well as the one that kicks off that run on December 11th. Now, this is a Denver Broncos team that just came off this weekend where they were able to scratch out a victory and actually looked a little bit improved, but have made this giant move for this quarterback in Russell Wilson that has not overall panned out this season. I think not only does, does this call in a lot of question about where they'll be at that point, but it also calls into question the future of that franchise because tying that guy up and that contract on that roster that clearly needs more work, that's going to be really difficult for them to sustain. I don't see them being able to put up anything near competition to the Kansas City Chiefs in either of those contests. Am I wrong? I don't think you're wrong. I think the the big thing when it comes to the Broncos is what are they going to be playing for in the second half of the season? Mm-hmm. I mean, you're looking at a scenario where they could possibly be, you know, five or six or seven games under 500 at this point, uh, at the point where they play the Chiefs, maybe even more. Who knows? And Russell Wilson has not been what they expected him to be, and it looks like he is not going to get any better than what he really has been for them so far to this season. So the question becomes, what are they playing for? Who are they playing? And you said it yourself. That contract is a huge, huge drain on them going forward. And you would have to think that that is one of the biggest blunders in in the NFL easily this year. Yeah. I, I'm not so sure it's not in the last 10 years if Russell continues playing the way he has. Because they're going to be tied to him for the next couple of years. They can't get out of it. Yeah, it's very, very difficult. Now, there are some rumors, and obviously we're recording this pre-trade deadline, so there are still some rumors out there about what could be happening. So if something does come down with them uh, in either direction, we'll let you guys know that as well. That moves us to the Texans on the 18th of December, uh, a team that has been flailing again. Chiefs Chiefs have a decent matchup here with the AFC South this year. So yep. um, as, as much as my buddy John Harris over on the draft show would like to, to feign – that I'm wrong. Um, this this isn't a contest. This isn't something that I think uh, the Chiefs should have any but more than a speed bump. As long as they maintain their composure and their concentration on it, I think they roll right through the Texans. I do too. But the question I have when it comes to getting into this part of the schedule for Kansas City is going to be the question I'm going to have pretty much every game left on their schedule. It's where are the Bills? Because if the Bills are so out in front that it's not going to matter, maybe Kansas City ends up falling one in one of these games just because they are not focused enough. If the Bills are close enough to catch, that changes how it's going to happen. Or yeah. that changes what, what could happen, and Kansas City could still get the number one seed. Absolutely. They've got to be two games up. Yeah, that motivation changes everything. At the end of the day, I don't think it's it. And so that brings us down to our the last two games on the schedule, not not chronologically, but the last two we haven't spoken about is the Christmas Eve game against the Seahawks, who got the other side of the Russell Wilson trade and didn't even use hardly at all any either of the guys they got with Russell. So I, I know it's been a Cinderella story, and Geno Smith's been playing well this year. I'm not sure that it, it lasts to this point. I'm not sure they're much more than a 500 club by the time the Chiefs play them on December 24th. Do you? 
I hate saying this, but it keeps going back to injuries for me. And and DK Metcalf sounds like he's going to be back uh, sooner rather than later, which it looked like he was going to be out. And I think that really would have affected what Seattle's going to do. If they could continue winning over the next couple of weeks, then maybe they have a chance to still be in a winning direction when it gets to this point in the season. The problem for them is that they play in the NFC West. That is a good division, generally speaking. The 49ers are a good team, even though Kansas City just walloped them. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you're still going to be going up against Arizona, who I think can be good. And, and Andre Hopkins is back. You still have, you know, the Rams in there that won the Super Bowl last year. So that's going to be a tough division. And that's going to be the crux of where the question comes in is are they going to be able to continue playing well and play well throughout their division? Because that's how they win their, that's how they, are going to be in a good spot is if they can control the teams in their division. I just don't know that they have the roster to be able to do it. I, I like what Geno Smith has done so far this season, but to continue when teams are going to see you a second time, I, I just, I don't see it. I think that they're going to falter. And, and then if he starts, if they start faltering, you have to wonder if some of the confidence is what's really been driving them. Yeah, it could absolutely be in the end. While I think this is a little bit tighter than some of the other games on this roster, I, I don't think this is a loss for the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs get them as well. And that brings us to the last ball game of the season. That is January 8th against the Raiders in Las Vegas. And this is this is my, my blip. This is my you have to be focused and not take the last game of the season off, especially if the Bills were to go on a run and, and stay out front and you don't have that. Like knowing that you have to play in the wild card weekend. Like I... I I hesitate to say that they're going to be 100% focused on this. And if the Raiders continue what they've been doing, which is running the ball really, really well, and they're able to get any kind of turnover production off of Patrick Mahomes in the offense, I think this is one that could be a gotcha game. Could easily be a gotcha game. And there goes the other caveat of not only a gotcha game, but it could also be a game where it's just not going to matter for Kansas City. Yeah. If the Bills are still a game up going into the final week, it doesn't matter if Kansas city is high enough above the number three and they're in the number two spot. Maybe they sit their starters. I, this is the game where you would expect them to win, but there's so many things that could play into it because it's week 18. You know, is it a gotcha game to, are they starting to look ahead to the playoffs? Uh, does there, is their playoff seating already set to where it doesn't matter in this game? Uh, I could see it both ways. And the other thing that is going to play very interesting in this is, are the Raiders going to be fully healthy at their big three? Are they yeah. going to have Renfro? Are they going to have Waller? Are they going to have Devontae Adams? If they do, all three of those guys should be on the same page at this point in the season. That could completely change the dynamic of how they're playing. But right now, the Raiders are so far behind the eight ball, it's hard to see them being competition for the Chiefs at the in the final game. Yeah. So when we take a big step back and we look at the this 10-game run in the second half of the season, how do you see it ending? And what do you see their final record at? We're, we're doing our mid-season predictions right here, folks. 13 and four. To whom? Who are the other two losses to? I still think they lose to the Bengals, and then I don't know who they're going to lose the second game to. I just feel like they're going to lose a game that they probably shouldn't. Okay. And, and that's, a, that's a fair fair estimation. I think they do lose a game. I think they finish 14 and three. And I think it is a battle with the Bengals, but there might be some hangar over there. So I'm going to give give them that that's the most likely to be the loss. But I think the Chiefs finish right now. Right now I'm saying it, 14-3 and three and are the number two seed going into the playoffs. Let us know what you think. How does this season run down as we look forward to how they get to the postseason? Leave your comments on YouTube. Leave your comments uh, in the reviews on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts. We would appreciate that very much. Make sure you get subbed on YouTube as well as over on the audio platforms, any and all. We appreciate your time. Hope that you're having a good week. Matt Derrick will be back with me tomorrow, and we will talk to you then.